Hi, my name is Aaron Riley. I'm a student and sustainability assistant at Pikes Peak Community College. I created this video to encourage students to participate in the annual trash art competition and also to explain part of the process that you can use to create your own trash art. Um, so the trash art competition is put on every year by the Office of Sustainability and we, we do it to encourage students to look at waste around them and um, see the beauty and potential in it. Um, if you want a little more information on this, there's a link to a step-by-step -step guide and uh, our website that you can click. It should be in the description of this video. Um, so, like I said, during this video I'm going to go through the process that you can use to conceptualize, create, and capture um, your trash art to enter it into the competition. So let's get started. So the first steps in the creation of trash art in the process of creation are kind of planning and gathering. Um, so when you're planning out your trash art, you kind of want to think about um, a theme. Um, and for this year, the theme is restoring our earth. So you want to think of art that kind of brings to attention um, a restorative action, something that can help the environment. Um, whether that is recycling, composting, using renewable energy, even just encouraging people to get into the outdoors and enjoy nature. Um, so you kind of want to sit down and brainstorm some ideas of actions that maybe you have taken or you could take. And then, then what you can do is you can kind of go around your house or wherever you're at and just look for trash. You can look in your recycling bin, your trash, and you can... Also, just look around your house for unused materials that you may be able to create something out of. And this can help a lot in just seeing something and getting inspiration for an idea. Um, that's kind of what I did. I just looked around and found materials and then just kind of formulated an idea from those materials. So these are some of the materials I kind of came up with after just looking around my house. And um, the coffee cup, I, I was just drinking that coffee and I came up with the idea to make a windmill. Um, and then I wanted to kind of make some like tulip fields around the windmill. So this will be kind of like a painting, but I'll be to just be using materials probably glued to a piece of cardboard. Um, and then just a few other random materials that I found around the house. So it, it can be really simple. You can just find random things and if they give you a good idea of something that you can make, then use them. So at this point, you're gonna wanna take your materials and kind of start laying things out and figure out, kind of get a vision of how you want this thing to look. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of cardboard and this is kind of going to be my canvas here. And then I'm going to take these envelopes and I'm going to cut them and into basically kind of strips to make them look like flowers in a field, I guess. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to make a windmill out of it. And I'm going to glue it all to this piece of cardboard. So what I've done here is I've taken the cup and I've just cut it kind of in half and glued it down here. It's not sticking real well, but it'll be all right. Then I took another piece of cardboard and kind of made it into a, a roof for the windmill. Um, I've taken some of these envelopes and I'm making, trying to make what looks like little fields of flowers and some grass or something here. Um, but yeah, that's about what's going on. So it's starting to get there. You can see there's a sky and looks like kind of like flowers with a little sun there. Um, yeah, just real simple, cutting and gluing pieces of paper. So what I did here for the uh, the blades for the windmill, I just cut them out of a old paper plate and uh, stuck a toothpick right through the center. And then I took another toothpick and just stabbed it right into here. And then we have windmill blades. Just like. So this is about as far as I'm going to go with this, just for demonstration purposes. Um, if you're doing something like this, you can make it as complex and as beautiful as you want. Um, I am just going to keep it simple 
and here is a windmill with some flowers and a little sun there and a blue sky behind it. Um, but again, you, you can make these as extravagant as you want. So. So now that your artwork is done, you're going to want to capture it. You're going to want to either, if it's something like this, you can just take a good picture of it. Or if it's something like a sculpture, you can take a lot of pictures of it as you walk around it, get really good coverage, or you can take a video as you walk around it, I guess. Um, but you want to really emphasize your artwork. You don't want to have a bunch of other things in the picture that are distracting. You don't want other people or your dog or whatever in the picture, you want it to just be about your artwork. And you want to make sure your lighting is good so you can see very well what's going on there. You don't want the lighting to be kind of hiding things in your artwork that you would normally want somebody to see if they were standing there looking at it. Um, and when you do it, you want to record a description of it. So you want to introduce yourself, you want to um, state the title of your artwork and also you want to describe how it relates to the theme and what the idea behind it is um, and that's all so then you can make your submission thank you for watching